hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Andrei Shetnikov, and we continue our practice of solving problems at the level of physics schools, followed by experimental verification of what we obtain in our answers. And today's problem, in a sense, continues the recently discussed problem about the rising bubble on our channel. If you haven't seen that video, take a look. Today's problem was proposed to us by Ekaterina Leontieva from Moscow University. It is formulated as follows. There are two weights and two additional springs installed like this, inside the frame. Moreover, the lower weight weighs more than the upper one, and the lower spring is stiffer than the upper spring. The upper spring is compressed due to the frame. Then the weights and springs are swapped. The lighter ones are moved down along with their spring while the heavier ones are moved up. And once more, everything is tightened due to the frame. And the question is whether or not the force with which the lower weight exactly presses on the support will change. At first, it seems that there shouldn't be any change since the total mass of the two weights remains the same. And the springs are compressed to the same length, given that the gap in the frame has not changed. But let's see what we get from the calculations. In situation A, there is a heavy weight at the bottom and a stiffer spring. The load on the lower support is created by the weight of the lower weight M1G and the pressure of the lower spring K1 D1. Now we need to find the deformation of the spring D1. To do this, we will write the equilibrium condition for the upper weight. Its weight is equal to M2G and it is balanced by the difference of forces K1 D1 and K2 D2. We will also need a condition that is created by a fixed frame. The sum of the deformations of the springs D equal to D1 plus D2 remains the same in both situations A and B. We solve a system of two linear equations and find the deformation D1. We substitute its expression for the force and obtain the following expression. For situation B, the first two terms will remain the same and only the third term, highlighted in red, will change. And since K2M2 is less than K1M1, it follows that the force FA is greater than the force FB. And so it turns out that by rearranging two adents, that is by swapping the weights and springs, the load on the base changes. Well, this looks quite astonishing, and I suspect that many of you still don't believe it. Who knows what kind of mathematical calculations I went through. Therefore, this prediction of the theory should be immediately tested in an experiment. And here is our setup with the force sensor under the lower weight. When there is a heavy weight and a stiff spring at the bottom, the sensor shows a load of 6.4 N. Let's swap the weights and springs. The load decreased to 5 N. The effect is indeed observed. The difference in the sensor readings in two different positions of the weights and springs was 1.4 Newton. Now this result needs to be compared with the predictions of the theory. In our experiment, the masses of the weights were 100 and 200 grams, while the stiffness of the springs, according to our measurements, was equal to 13 and 3 Newtons per centimeter. And the theoretical difference in forces is 1.4 N and here we observe a wonderful agreement between theory and experiment. But we still do not have a comprehensive and qualitative explanation of this phenomenon that would be clear literally at a glance in any way. And to provide a qualitative explanation, I will proceed as physicists do in such situations. We need to simplify the model and consider some limiting case. I will assume that the lower spring in the first situation is very, very stiff which effectively means that a solid rod is inserted here. Then the force exerted on the support will be created firstly by the weight of these two loads and secondly by the pressure of the upper spring. Now let's swap the weights and springs. Well, it should be noted that now the load on the upper spring has decreased. This weight is no longer pressing on it and it will expand a little. But since it is very stiff, the deformation will be negligible and the gap for the second spring will remain exactly the same, which means it will be compressed just like in the first situation. And then the force exerted on the support will be created by the weight of the second load, 
and the pressure of the spring that has not changed. Thus, the force exerted on the support will decrease exactly by the weight of the first load. And I want to thank Alexei for this segment with a qualitative explanation. Thank Ekaterina Leontieva for the interesting problem. And thank everyone who financially supports our channel because it exists solely on such private donations. And by the way, you can help us financially. How to do this is written in the comments to this video. And now I will move on to the final question, and it will be as follows. Here is the formula for the change in load on the lower support when rearranging the weights and springs. And it is clear that from the values of delta from the compression provided by the frame, this change in load does not depend on anything at all. How is it that no matter how much compression there is, the change in load will be the same? This seems quite strange. Yet the formula speaks to this. How is this possible? Please share your thoughts on this matter in the comments section of this video on YouTube.